Hey Blender Maniacs, this is Alex Cordobard for Blendermania3D.com and do you know that satisfaction when you take a needle and pop a balloon? Well, that's the exact same satisfaction that we're going to have creating these awesome cloth simulations in Blender. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the improved cloth simulations in Blender 2.82, which is the internal air pressure, which basically allows for us to simulate balloons and cushions and the internal cloth springs that makes cloth behave kind of like soft bodies. How cool are these effects right here? And again, like I said, very satisfying and fun to do. So let's get right into it. I'm going to open a new Blender file and just start off with a UV sphere. So Shift A, add a UV sphere. I've basically added three materials to it so that it looks like a beach ball and added a plane. All right, with this basic setup, let's get right to it. First, selecting our plane. Let's make sure that this is a collision object and then select our sphere and add it as a cloth. Now, let's play this, see what we got. Boom, that is what we got right there. Now, the basic cloth set settings right here, I'm not gonna go over as they are pretty much standard and the same as before. However, we're going to take a look at the internal springs and pressure right here. So let's start off with the funnest one first, the pressure. I'm going to enable this and now let's play it and see what this looks like. Pretty much the same. All right, let's see what some of these settings do. Now I'm going to go over these just briefly to explain to you what they do. However, as we make these uh, simulations, you'll get a better understanding for it. Now, the pressure right here is the pressure applied to the whole mesh, basically. This is kind of the pressure or the air pressure inside your mesh. You could have this as a positive value to have it inflate or a negative value to have it deflate. Right here, the custom volume and the target volume work together. So you have to enable this to get the target volume. And basically, what this does, it's the volume inside of the mesh. The higher the volume, the higher the volume inside of your mesh when it starts. Again, you'll see it better when we start to create the simulations. And then the factor right here is basically the air pressure scaling factor or the strength or the multiplier. So the higher this number is, the more it increases or strengthens or multiplies the pressure value. And then we got vertex groups, which is pretty self-explanatory. You could set where on the vertex groups this is uh, put, which is really fun to do as well. All right, let's get right into it. Create our first little simulation here. Before we do that, however, I'm going to hit Shift D and Y and copy this over so that we have it for our second one. Now with this one, what I want to do, I'm going to bring these down a little bit. What I want to do with this one is I want to make it have a negative pressure. So I want to suck the life and the air out of our beach ball. I'm going to put the pressure to negative 5. Now let's play this, see what that looks like. Boom, it's completely imploded on itself. Now it's a little bit extreme. What we could do is decrease the factor value. Again, the factor is kind of like a multiplier and it increases the pr it increases the pressure strength or multiplies it. If we put this to let's say 0.2 and now play it, you can see it's a little bit less intense, which is exactly what we want. So there we go, we have it doing that. How cool is that? Now, what I want to do is let's animate this so that it deflates and then inflates back up right away. I'm going to play this, go to frame 30 or so. And with the pressure right here, I'm going to hit I to insert a, key, uh, insert a keyframe. And on the factor, hit I to insert a keyframe there. Then I'm going to go to frame, let's say frame 50. And let's put this to a positive value. So what this is going to do, I'm going to put 5, I to insert a keyframe, and leave this at 2, and just insert a keyframe for that. What this is going to do is now if we play it, the air is going to deflate and then inflate back up. How cool is that? Very cool. Now, what I want to do with this is I'm just going to take these two keyframes, hit G and bring them back a little bit, and then bring this closer to the floor like that. So that when it hits the floor, it inflates back up like that a little bit faster. 
All right, now you can see what this one is doing right here. Let's do a little simulation with this one right here. So this one kind of deflates and inflates right away. This one right here, we're gonna make it deflate like that. Let's make it deflate a little bit more. So with the pressure, I'm gonna put the pressure to negative, uh, let's put it to negative one, see what that gives us. And if we play that, negative one is a little too much. So I'm gonna put it to negative 0.1. And there we go. And I'm going to increase the factor to, let's say, 4. So now it's going to multiply the negative value. And there we go. So we got that. Now with this one, again, I'm going to play it. Let it bounce a little bit. Insert a keyframe at frame 50. I, I. And then let's go to frame 70. And let's increase this to a positive value of 5 and hit the I key. Now, because the factor is a value of four, it's gonna multiply the five quite a bit, so it might be too intense, but let's check out how it looks. And there you go, how cool is that? So it looks like our ball deflated and then got inflamed a little bit, or inflated a little bit. Very, very cool. And if you put the factor down, it will have a less intense effect. All right, let's take a look at another one. With this next one, we're gonna take a look at kind of like a popping effect. So if you were to pop a ball, I'm gonna select this one, hit Shift D, and copy it over on the Y axis. And with these two keyframes on that last ball selected, I'm gonna select them, X and X, and delete the keyframes with my mouse hovered over there. So right now we got nothing on this ball. Oh, and look at that, how fun. <laughs> I'm gonna make the floor a little bit bigger. All right, so with this one, I want it to bounce like that, but I want it to be inflated more. With this, I'm gonna increase the pressure to one and put the factor to one as well. Let's see what that gives us. Boom, there we go. And I kinda of want the pressure to be a little bit more, so I'm gonna put it to three. All right, cool. So now we got that, let's go to frame Let's go to frame 60 or so, hit the I key on the pressure, and let's hit an I key on the factor just in case we mess with that too. And let's go to frame 70, and we're going to make it look like it popped or got poked by a sharp needle. Put the pressure at negative, let's put it at negative 5, make it pretty intense. Hit the I key to insert a keyframe, and the factor as well. Now let's see what we got with that. It bounces and then boom, gets popped. How cool is that? Now, like I did in the original file, you can make a needle popping the balloon. Now let's take a look at one final one. We're gonna make a balloon kind of deflated and then rising in the air. So this is using the vertex groups uh, setting. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to select this ball, hit Shift D, Y, copy it over one more again. And this time, uh, again, with the keyframe selected, I'm going to hit X, delete those keyframes so that we start from scratch. And this time, we're going to add in a vertex group. So here, hitting Tab to go into edit mode. Let's go to the Vertex Data tab. Click the plus icon to add a vertex group. And basically, we're going to tell Blender where to add the air pressure to and to only add it to certain vertices or certain faces. I'm going to hit 1 to go into vertex select mode. Select this vertex. And then hit Control plus to increase the selection to about half of it. Control negative to remove one. And then I'm going to click Assign. Then I'm going to go back to the cloth settings. And under the vertex group, I'm going to select the group. And let's see what this gives us right here. I'm going to click play. And you can see that our balloon is floating away. And that's because we have a positive value. Let's put this a negative value first. I'm going to put it negative 5. Play that. Negative 5 is way too intense. <laughs> let's tone it down to negative 1. Please feel free to play around with the settings once you're done with this tutorial because there are so many things you can do. As you can see, with a high negative value, you can make it be thrown down intensely like that. Again, when we play that, you can see what we got right there. All right, cool. Now let's go to frame 
30 or so. Let's put the pressure, uh, a keyframe on the pressure, I and the factor. Let's put a keyframe there as well. And then let's go ahead and go to frame 50 or so and bring this to a positive value of 4 and hit a keyframe right there. Now let's see what we got. Play that. And then as you see, because the, it goes to a positive value and the air pressure is only added to the top vertices here, it's kind of like having air pressure in a balloon and it starts to rise and float away. <laughs> How cool is that? Very cool. So again, you can mess around with the settings on the, uh, on the vertex groups and the different settings. Let's take a look at one last thing before we move on to the uh, the internal cloth springs, and that is the the target volume and the custom volume. So with this ball right here, I'm just gonna hit Shift D. Actually, let's I'm just gonna select this one, Shift D. Whoa, Y, bring it there. With the keyframe selected on here, I'm gonna hit X, delete keyframes, and then play that. So we just got that there, right there. That there, right there, perfect. All right, let's put the pressure to one. And let's see what that looks like with just pressure at one. And again, you can see when, when it starts out the animation, the ball kind of inflates a little bit because the pressure is increasing. If we put this pressure to say, let's say seven, you can see that in, the, the ball expands quite a bit because the pressure is so intense. All right, I'm actually gonna put this pressure to let's say 0.1, just for demonstrating the custom uh, volume right there. All right, now we could select the custom volume. And if it's a value of zero, it's not really gonna do much. So let's put this to one. And now let's play this right here. And you can see that right now at a value, at a value of one, that volume looks like that. However, if we put the volume to let's say five, you can see that the volume looks like that. Let's put it in between. Let's put 2.5. And again, this is kind of like the initial volume of the ball or how much air is in there. So now you can see we get that kind of effect, which is kind of like a beanbag cushion type effect. So you can see what those different values give us uh, using the custom volume on the pressure right here. Very, very cool. So again, you could get some many, many different cool effects. These are just a couple that we did here, but please, by all means, mess around with this new setting for the pressure under your cloth. And of course, you can mix it up with all these different settings here as well. All right, with that, let's move on to internal springs, which will be a little bit faster. I'm gonna hit Shift A, add a mesh cube. Let's bring that on the Y axis over here. I'm gonna bring it up and copy the plane over so that we got a floor. All right, then with the cube, I'm gonna hit tab to go into edit mode, right click, subdivide, three, four, five times, and there we go. All right, under the cloth, let's select cloth and rewind it and play it. So that is the cloth with no internal springs. Brilliant. All right, now I'm gonna hit Shift D, Y, copy this cube over. I'm gonna turn on internal springs and let's see what that gives us now. And boom, check it out. Our cloth kind of acts like a rigid body and it seems like it has some springs inside. So right here, the max spring creation length over here is basically the maximum length of the internal, of the spring that's inside the mesh. And if the distance is longer than the number here, it doesn't get applied and doesn't create a spring. And zero means that there's no length for the spring and it's infinite. So right now it's set to zero. Let's set this to something like 0.5. And now you'll see the effect that it does right here. It has a little bit of a spring to it, but not much. So let's put this maybe to three and see what that gives us. And now this is gonna give us a little bit more of a spring so it doesn't squash down as much. That's a little too intense. Uh, let's try two. And you can see what that gives us right there. It had a little bit of a spring and a bounce to it right there. 
Now the max creation is basically the diversion or how much it the springs divert from their original path along the normals. So kind of how much it bends in whichever direction. Let's put this down to something like 30 and see what that gives us right there. And you can see that it has a little bit of a different spring action to it depending on the angle that it bounces on. I'm going to put this back to 45. And then we got the tension stiffness right here, which is basically how much the material resists to stretching and the compression, which is how much the material resists to compression. So right now, if we play it, we got that right there. However, let's put the tension down to one and see what that gives us. Boom, you can see it's a little bit different. And the compression, let's also put that to one. And it basically compresses a little bit more. Now, right here, we also have the max tension and the max compression. We could play around with these settings and put these down as well to decrease the compression and the tension settings. Now, let's go ahead and actually decrease the spring right here to one. So that it has less of a spring. And you could see what that gives us right there. How cool is that? And then you could play around with the compression depending on how much compression you want or how much you want it to resist. So if we increase this, it's going to compress a lot less. And you can see that the max compression is changed as well at the same time. And you can see what that gives us right there. It's compressed quite a lot less. And then, of course, we, you could increase the tension right here, which is basically the stretching of the mesh and how much the material is resisted resistant to stretching so again you could play around with these different values i'm going to increase it even more let's just increase it to like a, a ridiculous amount right there and you could see what that gives us boom so again play around with these different settings it's actually quite fun i'm going to hit shift d y copy this over and i'm going to increase the uh the max spring creation to let's say three to make it quite intense and you can see that now it acts more like a rigid body than cloth or anything like that so again these are two cool new settings that are improved in the cloth simulations we got the pressure and the internal springs of course play around with the different settings right here we got the vertex groups so we could decide which parts of the mesh are affected by the internal springs but the funnest and most productive way of doing it is just play around with the different settings that I've just shown you and you could see what kind of results you get. And like I said, it is really, really fun. So great job. We created all these different effects right here. Have fun with it. Post your result or whatever you do on BlenderMania3.com on the forums. Look forward to seeing what you make. Please subscribe to this channel, click the subscribe button and the little bell to get notified when I upload new videos. New videos are uploaded every single week. With that, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao for now. Au revoir.